we're installed and configured and ready to go. But what does installing Xamarin really get us? Let's take a look. I've launched Visual Studio 2015. If you're using a different version, the things I'm about to show you should still be in the same places. We've already seen one enhancement with the Tools menu. Here we see a number of useful tools for working with Android. The Emulator Manager allows you to create and configure hardware emulators using the Android Virtual Device Manager. Note there is a disconnect between what this menu says and what the tool from Google is actually called. It says Android Emulator Manager here, but when you launch the tool, the tool calls itself Android Virtual Device Manager, or AVD Manager for short. Developers will use these terms interchangeably. We'll cover the Android SDK Manager in detail in a later video. It is used to manage the tools and build targets you use when creating apps. The Android Device Monitor allows you to connect to and monitor Android devices connected to your development computer, such as if you have a tablet connected to your computer via a USB cable. There is a tool here to step you through publishing your app, and we'll cover that in detail as well. The ADB command prompt is sort of like a DOS or command prompt for working with Android virtual machines. Also on the Tools menu is a menu for working with Microsoft's Android emulator. This emulator is optimized for working in a Windows Visual Studio environment. It uses Microsoft's Hyper-V technology, rather than a Java-based emulator like those you'd find in the Android SDK. The next obvious enhancement is seen when we go to create a new project. Let's do that now. I'll click File in the Visual Studio menu, and I'll create a new project. I can see there is an Android section here, so I'll click on it, and this will show me all the types of Android projects I can create. I will take you into most of these in detail very soon, but for now that would be premature. Just realize that each project type is a piece of the puzzle. The blank project, which we'll be starting with, creates the project layout and basic files needed to create an Android app. Compared with other Visual Studio project templates that call themselves blank, you'll see in just a minute that this isn't really blank. There are a lot of things in there, including a runnable app. Beneath that is a template that allows you to create unit tests for your project. The Android Wear app doesn't change into a terrifying wolf during the full moon, but it does refer to a project that runs on wearable hardware, such as a watch. The Wear app allows you to build apps for wearable hardware, such as the Android Watch. The WebView app is designed to take a web app running on a web server and run it on devices by generating what is basically a customized web browser wrapped in Android app normal app packaging. Naturally, your web app needs to be designed using a responsive UI paradigm. And equally naturally, these apps only work with a live internet connection. The OpenGL app is specialized around apps that will utilize OpenGL which is the de facto standard software library used to work with accelerated 2D and 3D graphics hardware across multiple platforms. This is normally used for games and visualization apps, which require more extreme graphics than what you'd find in, say, a line of business app consisting mostly of simple data. The bindings library allows you to make a library that binds with Java jars. You can leverage any Java code in this way, including something you wrote or something you've licensed. The last element on our list is the class library project. This is similar to any other project type that allows you to create a library consisting of plain old C-sharp objects, which are designed to be reused across multiple apps.